Welcome to No Worries Biology. My name is Anya Doyle and in this video I'm focusing on Joshua trees and evolution. Joshua trees, or Yucca brevifolia as they are scientifically known, are native to the deserts of the southwestern U.S. They are monocotyledons, or short monocots, meaning their seedlings only possess one embryonic leaf, called a cotyledon. Lilies, tulips, orchids, and grasses are other examples for monocotyledons. The monocots are a major group of the flowering plants and they are believed to be up to 150 million years old. But of course, Joshua trees as a species are not quite that old. But they have been around for quite a while. There's archaeological evidence which suggests the Shasta ground sloth feeding on the fruits of Joshua trees about 15,000 years ago. By doing so, this prehistoric animal may have contributed to the distribution of Joshua trees. In those days, the climate of what we call today the southwestern U.S. was much more humid. Therefore, Joshua trees were able to grow in a lot of areas where they can't be found today anymore. Also, a lot of plant species, which would nowadays be competing with Joshua trees, didn't exist in those days yet, like the Pleistocene, or they weren't as abundant. For these reasons, today Joshua trees are limited to a very narrow habitat, mainly the Mojave Desert, to which they are highly adapted to survive the harsh climate. For more information on these adaptations, watch the video Joshua Trees – Adaptations to Life in the Mojave Desert. Back to evolution. Joshua trees live in a very close relationship with a specific insect, the yucca moth. The yucca moth is the only animal capable of transferring the pollen between the flowers of Joshua trees. This moth has developed specialized organs to collect and transfer the Joshua tree pollen. Therefore, without the yucca moth, Joshua trees would not be capable of producing seeds anymore. And the moth benefits from this relationship as well. Yucca moth lay their eggs into the ovaries of Joshua tree flowers where they hatch and the larvae then feed on the Joshua tree seeds. While this definitely is a cost factor for the Joshua trees, enough seeds remain uneaten to ensure the survival of the species. So without the Joshua trees, the yucca moth would no longer be capable of having surviving offspring either. This is an excellent example for co-evolution. Co-evolution refers to a process of interlinked evolutionary change in two or more species. As a result, these species become specialized for their mutual relationship. Well, think about it. Can you come up with a hypothesis how this relationship between yucca moth and Joshua tree might have developed? Well, I could imagine a scenario where yucca moth and maybe a bunch of other insects were laying their eggs into, by that time, far less specialized Joshua tree flowers. And maybe at that time, Joshua tree flowers were still capable of being pollinated by a number of different species. Joshua tree specimens with narrower, less accessible flowers were at an evolutionary advantage because not all of the insects were capable of depositing their eggs inside their flowers. Therefore, less of the seeds were eaten and those Joshua trees produced more offspring. At the same time, those moths that had a somewhat longer ovipositor, which is the structure they used to place the eggs into the flowers, were at an evolutionary advantage because they were able to access those flowers that were narrower, which the others couldn't. This means they had less competition, more of their offspring survived. This would mean that both species, yucca moth and Joshua tree, evolved in adaptation to each other. And a relationship emerged that was mutually beneficial and that was specialized enough to be exclusive. Such specializations also pose a risk, of course. 
if one species goes extinct, the other dies too, as neither can reproduce without the other. Therefore, let us all do our part to protect the environment and our climate, because climate change poses a severe threat towards the Joshua trees. Protect this wonderful co-evolutionary tree-moth relationship. This is it for today. At www.noworriesbiology.com you can find a variety of materials on a bunch of different topics. Just have a look around and maybe there's something that you like. See you next time.